Hi, I'm here in northern Queensland in the wet tropical rainforest that are here right along the coastline. A wonderful environment. Uh, tropical rainforests in general right around the globe have this huge influence on climate, but they also have this rich treasure house of, of biodiversity with animals and plants. And you can probably hear some of them in the background. Now, 8% of the global land surface is covered by these magnificent forests, both here in Australia and in South America and Africa and other parts of the world. Um, but even though it only occupies 8%, 40% um, of the Earth's uh, terrestrial biomass are locked up in these forests, in the uh, trees, in the, in the leaf litter and so on. Fantastic. Um, and of the annual bioproduction, uh, so all the biological activity that goes on every year, 50% of it occurs in these rainforests. So although it's 8% of the land surface, it's a huge proportion of the terrestrial biomass and bioproductivity every year. Now they have a huge uh, influence on climate, simply because that biomass actually draws down carbon from the atmosphere and locks it into the trunks and the leaves. And so it, they, they act as this huge sink for carbon dioxide in there. So we lock, they, carbon is locked up in these forests. Wonderful. Now, of course, if we deforest that, we come along and cut the trees down, or if they're blown down by uh, cyclones that occur here occasionally in, in the tropical North Queensland, then that carbon is released back into the atmosphere and so contributes to the greenhouse effect. But other ways in which these forests can uh, uh, influence climate um, is through uh, albedo. That's, that's one of the main ones because um, the Earth's surfaces, they have different colours, you know, the ice sheets and the high latitudes are white and so reflect a lot of energy back out into the atmosphere and into space. They have a very high, a high albedo. But here we can see that the, the leaves of the, of the rainforest is very dark, dark green. And so the albedo is very low and so uh, the solar radiation is absorbed by the, by the, uh, the, the leaves and the trees within the, within the rainforest environment. So it ab absorbs a lot of that energy and locks it within the, uh, the rainforest. Now, the way that that, that then interacts with the, with the atmosphere is controlled by what's happening right up there at the surface of the rainforest canopy. Um, and that's the roughness of the canopy, because it's not an even surface up there at the top of the canopy. You've got these trees sticking up and some low lying down, and so it's quite rough. And the more rough that canopy is, the greater it will slow the wind down as it blows across the canopy. You know, the tree sticking up will have a drag effect on the, on the airflow and slow it down. And that will inc uh, encourage eddies and turbulence to, to form in that canopy, which takes this heat that's being absorbed by the rainforest and take it into the atmosphere. So you have this heat cycling. And so the air above is not much uh, cooler than it is in the rainforest because you've got this good effective mixing at uh, the boundary between the rainforest uh, and the air. So the roughness is important. Now the energy that is absorbed into the rainforest, you know, what happens to it? Well, uh, you, can, you can hear probably in the background there's a lot of water running through the rainforest, um, which of course gives the, the moisture for the trees to grow in the first place. But the energy that's brought in through the solar radiation actually deals with that, uh, that water um, in a number of different ways. Uh, for example, when the rain falls, not all of it will actually reach the ground because some of it is intercepted high up there in the canopy and in the leaves and in the trunks. Now, from about 10% of rainfall in the, in the tropical forest to perhaps over 50% is actually intercepted by the trees and never actually makes it down to the forest floor. Um, and due to the, to the, the high uh, heat in the tropical rainforest, um, that water uh, can be evaporated straight off the leaves. Uh, you can see here we've got water on the leaves here, and that can be evaporated straight off back into the atmosphere. Um, and it, that increases the humidity. But also, when water does reach the, the forest floor down here, you can see it's pretty dry at the moment, but when it does get down here, um, the roots take it up the, uh, into the plant through the, the stems of the plant and out to the leaves where it's breathed out by stomata on the base of the leaves. And that's, that, that is a process we call transpiration. Of the plant will transpire uh, moisture back into the air. So through both evaporation directly off surfaces and through transpiration through the leaves, moisture is put back into the atmosphere. And that, that increases the humidity. But also that water can then rise up through the turbulence and uh, mixing into the atmosphere and 
40% of the rain that falls in the, in the rainforest, 40% uh, will be recycled back into clouds to fall once again as rain. So we've got this wonderful cycle uh, of rain falling, precipitation, and then evapotranspiration taking it back out. We've also got streams, though, which uh, in the rainforest take some of that water out of the rainforest system to the sea as surface runoff. So the rainforest is a very complex environment that has these wonderful interactions with uh, climate, both on the local, regional, and global scale. So important environment to study if we're looking at global climate change.